Wow, long time no see. And I'm happy to see you guys again as well. So it's been like over 60 days since I've uploaded my last video. So it feels kind of like I've been active in the community still. I've been talking to you guys, I've been posting, but I just haven't been creating any videos because I just haven't had any time really. IRL has just been quite hectic for 2023. I'm sure most of you can relate. However, I have had the opportunity of upgrading my own home network, or let's say my home router slash access point from some silly Zyxel that I got with my ISP up to a Microtech HAP AX3. So I'm actually excited to be doing a bit of a review slash experience with you guys. And I just want to lay this out. I don't work for Microtech. I'm not trying to sell a router to you. I'm not going to try and hype you up to try and buy the device or anything. I just want to share my own experiences with you so that you can see the faults I ran into as well as the things I think that's really cool with this router. So let's get into the video. Now coming straight out of the box, this is a really nice looking router. It's sleek, it's thin, and it looks very modern. So when I took it out, I was actually very, very hyped about it because I thought, wow, this looks pretty good. Um, you also have a little stand that you can either put sideways or upright, depending on your own preferences. You do get some wall mounting kit with it, and you do get power adapter and antennas that you can add to the device to actually just give it that extra boost with your Wi-Fi signal, um, which you don't get with something like an AX2. What's very interesting about this HAP AX3, it, and I, I think it's for the HAP AX2 they do this as well, and probably all new routers going forward, the login credentials to get onto the Microtech isn't just admin blank anymore. So the device actually ships with this little thing that you can pull out and it actually shows you what your Wi-Fi username and password is, but also what the admin credentials are to log onto the device the first time. So very important to just take note of that because if you try admin blank and you're not figuring it out, <laughs> that's where you're gonna get the login details. This might affect some people that tend to use stuff like scripts to push configurations to blank routers. All that means in your case is you are most likely going to have to change your script a little bit, maybe log onto the device, set it to a generic password, whatever you push your scripts with, and that's how you're gonna have to provision stuff from now on. But it's not a big change smash. I actually enjoy this change. I think it's very a, a good change. It's security conscious. And it's not really such a big hassle to just pull this thing out and get the login information for your Microtech. So what is the deal for this new series that came out? Well, it's in the name of the router, the AX. That is specifically, you can think of it as Wi-Fi 6. So you will see a big performance boost for any devices that are capable of doing Wi-Fi 6. I personally could see a 300 megabit increase in my connection speed from my laptop that also uses an AX card to connect and it's just that good. So it's, it's really, really, really fast Wi-Fi. Now you do get stuff like Wi-Fi 6E these days, but Microtech doesn't do that yet. You can connect on the 20, 40 and 80 channels. Unfortunately, 160 is not available. So that's kind of where our bottleneck comes in, but it's still super fast. It's very reliable and very easy to set up and manage. So let's talk about why I decided to go for the HAP AX3 and what are its core differences between it and the HAP AX2. Now off the bat, the first big thing that you're going to realize is that the HAP AX3 does have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on ether one. Now you could either use this if you have a bigger internet connection with your ISP, anything above one gigabit and you need more speed, then you'll obviously want to have something like a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, but it's a single port. You could also potentially just move this to your switch. If your switches support 2.5 gigabit ethernet, then you have a 2.5 gigabit uplink to your switches. So that is actually quite nice as well. Um, that is one big change. The other big difference is the USB is actually on the HAP AX3 and it is USB 3. So you can actually connect any USB device It'll pick up. I'm actually using this to house containers, which I'm currently running on this HAP AX3. So it's an external drive that I've connected using the USB port. However, you could use that USB port for other things like connecting a LTE modem that uses USB, something in that line. So also a very big difference. And then we do have, even though the chipsets are the same with the NIC or the wireless card, as well as the CPU, the 
core speed of the HAP AX3 runs at 1800, whereas the AX2 runs around just a bit over 800 megahertz. So just something to take note of. And obviously we get these external antennas that we can add to the HAP AX3 that just gives us that extra coverage that we need uh, potentially, especially if you live, I don't live in a big house or anything. I've got a three bedroom place, but how my house is centered is very great for me because the access point is exactly in the middle in my office space where we're doing this video right now. So I've got all the coverage I need, but that the antennas just give me that extra gain in case I need it so that I can just get a little bit more extra wireless coverage or penetrate a little bit better. So just something, um, I think those are the core differences between the two devices, but you can use either one of them. Although I would probably recommend using the AX3 if possible, because it's just $40 more and you get all that extra functionality. So take it at, at what it is. But if you have an AX2, don't feel disappointed. It's still a very good router to use in your home. Now, I just quickly want to walk you guys through my experience with the actual router when I set it up and it was still a breeze. The Microtech does still come pre-configured with a script. So when you start it up, you can connect on Ether 225, whichever port you'd like to, open up Winbox, connect with the login credentials on that little card. And once you're in the router, it will ask you, do you want to keep the configuration or do you just want to um, factory reset the device? So if you go the factory reset route, that definitely means you have to set up everything from scratch. I went the consumer route because I wanted to treat this as a consumer product. I just said, I'm going to keep the default configuration and I just made some slight changes to what I wanted on the device, i.e. I changed the, the LAN's IP address uh, for the bridge. I also made a few slight changes to the wireless uh, connectivity because I updated the password to something else and I just wanted to tweak and play around with the wireless. But the setup was pretty straightforward for all of that. I also just needed to set up a triple PoE account or interface on my device since I use triple PoE to connect from my ISP. And this is where I ran into the first little snag. And this is also, again, my own issue. I created the interface and I had internet access from my router board or my marketing but I didn't have access from my actual home network. So I was thinking, hey, what is this? Um, and to me, that always tells me it's, it's some firewall thing. It's either a NAT thing or a firewall rule that might not be allowing the traffic. And as you would have it, it was a NAT issue because obviously this new triple PoE interface that I've added, it isn't added to the interface list for the WAN by default. So to fix this, one of two options, either just add the triple PoE interface to the WAN interface list or just create a new masquerade rule, which is what I ultimately did. I just added a new rule to say any traffic that's leaving over my triple PoE interface, just nap that out or masquerade it. And there we go. So home internet is sorted. Everything's working. And I was pretty great. That was really good because this I did in less than, I'd say 10 minutes to get everything set up. So you can say, yes, I am definitely well versed with Microtech, but I did want to go into it quite blindly like a consumer. And I think the experience is really straightforward. If you do run into any issues, you can follow the little pamphlet. It actually will just help you get onto the marketing documentation, just to help you with that initial setup if you struggle with any part. So I can also suggest doing that. Um, after I got that set up, what's the next thing I wanted to do? Well, I wanted to test the throughput on my network to actually see what I'm getting out of it now. Now, this is where testing multiple ways actually matters because I was initially only using iPerf to test between my clients. So on my LAN, it worked 100% fine. I got the speeds I was expecting and it runs at wire speed, which is nice. So two computers that's connected on the Microtik directly, great speed, basically a gigabit between the two points. I'm happy. When I was testing the wireless connectivity from my laptop, I saw I was only receiving about 300 to 400 megabits per second for something that I would assume I should be getting around 800 to 900 megabits per second because that's what my goal was with this upgrade. So I'm running the iPerf test. I keep seeing the issue. Doesn't look right. Uh, I speak to some people on Twitter. We make some changes to some of the configuration with the wireless. It really didn't have any effect or impact. But then I also noted if I connected with UDP on iPerf, then I got a lot faster speed. I was getting closer to six to 700 megabits per second. So there was definitely something that wasn't hundred percent right, but it wasn't anything with the configuration. It was just my testing method because 
of stuff like TCP uh, windowing with the TCP connections. The moment I swapped my connection or my testing method from iPerf to the bandwidth test tool from Microtech, so I actually installed the B-Test tool on my laptop. I ran it as a client and a server. And once I started connect conducting tests through the Microtech bandwidth testing solution, then I could actually see the speeds that I were hoping for. So I did get 800 megabits um, on my wireless connectivity, actually it peaked to around 900 megabits as well. And I'm very happy with that because when I look at the registration table for my client, I can see it shows in theory, it should be able to do, I, th I think it shows 1.1 gigabits. So that's still super fast. And if I'm getting like eight to 900 out, I'm actually really happy. I think that's really phenomenal and it works really well. So what do we want to do next after all of the testing? Well, I wanted to bring containers into the mix. I love containers and I find the idea awesome and fascinating of having this hosted on the router itself so that you get this added functionality from a single device it's really really cool so i add an external drive on the usb port that is given to me on the ax3 and i'm all glossy eyed i'm ready to do everything and suddenly my wife runs into the room and she says what's wrong with the internet the internet is down and i look at her and i'm very confused and i tell her i have no idea let me quickly have a look so I take a look and I quickly notice that my own laptop, that my own PlayStation, that her laptop, her phone and my phone, all of them can no longer see or connect to the 2.4 gigahertz band. And I found that was extremely strange because I haven't changed any configuration with the wireless. I haven't touched it. So what the heck is happening? So I can't figure it out. So I obviously do the simplest thing and that was to just revert the last change I made being I added an external drive to the Microtech. I just plug it out. Once it's plugged out, the 2.4 gigas band started working again. So I have no idea why that was happening. I posted about it on Reddit. I saw some guys mentioning, yeah, but it's because you are using a USB 3 cable and that cable causes interference. And it kind of makes sense, but it also doesn't make total sense to me because I can't see how that could bring down an entire band. Um, I would expect some interference or degraded connectivity, but not complete loss of connectivity to the 2.4 gigahertz band. So I'm scratching my head. I test it again, plug it in again. Same thing happens. I start playing around with some flash drives or thumb drives. I plug them in, plug a USB 2.1 in, and the connectivity works with the USB 2.1, but it's still a bit finicky. I'm, I'm not completely sure exactly why or what is happening. So no answer was clear from anybody that I was actually asking or checking around or doing that research. But then it struck me, wait, when I installed this Microtech, I actually did perform a router OS upgrade and I moved it to version 7.8. And the base firmware that came with the unit was 7.6. So great, I've got router OS upgraded, but I never upgraded the firmware on the device, the actual hardware component that actually upgrades the hardware stuff. So I went onto the resources and I performed the upgrade to the firmware from 7.6 to 7.8. And what would you know, the moment I did that router reboots and it boots back up and it works fine. I can connect any external drive, no issue. So just a small thing to take note of, especially if you're somebody like me, because you're just connecting the device and you have no clue why this is happening. That might actually be your issue. Your firmware might just not be running very nicely with whatever peripherals you're connecting. So just think about that as well. So anyways, more of the story is we got the device connected, everything's working. So I could actually now format the drive in the correct format. Uh, which was ext4 and I could actually host my container. So this was where I downloaded Pi-hole. I wanted to download AdGuard as well, but AdGuard for some reason was freaking out. And there is actually currently a bug on the Microtech forums. You can read about it. It's the first post on the container sub forum at the moment. And it explains that there is some weird issue. So you can either just pull an older tag of AdGuard to get it working, or you can import your own image of AdGuard using Docker. But if you just want to wait or maybe use Pi-hole, that's totally fine as well. So I just opted to use Pi-hole because I wasn't aware of that bug that existed with AdGuard yet. So install AdGuard, 
and I installed Uptime Kuma. And now I've got two of my favorite type of containers where I'm blocking ads and I'm able to monitor my network and it's really awesome. So I'm able to achieve all of this and I'm barely using, I'd say about between five to 600 megabits of my memory with all of the firewall rules and everything enabled as well. I've also tested the zero tier, it works really well and it's a great way for me to still access my home environment. If I'm abroad anywhere, I can just connect with the zero tier client, can get to my home lab and do whatever I want to do. So that's also really, really awesome. Um, but that's not a AX3 selling point or AX3 thing exclusive. I just wanted to bring that up that I can now do that with my router because before I had to do it with other devices or virtual machines because I was just using this very subpar um, router that was supplied by my ISP, which is n nothing against the router that they gave me. It is just a basic home-based router, a generic type of Zyxel. So big upgrade, definitely all the key features that I want. And I think the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to doing with you guys is actually making more content surrounding stuff like wireless because I don't consider myself a wireless expert or anything. I'm actually, that's my worst field in the networking field. I love routing, switching and firewalling. That, that's where I excel at. But I do think it's a great place for us to learn with together. And now I don't need to just show you wireless on this like 951s using very, very old bands. We can actually learn a lot more together. So what I actually want to say is if you guys want to ask any questions, things that you're curious about when it comes to a microtech, let me know in the comments what you want to know. And I can definitely see if we can talk about it, make a video about it and just figure stuff out. And I think I just want to give it a small, like a rating and I approve. I think it's an awesome router. Microtech, you did a great job with the AX3. The only faults that really occurred were faults from my own end. So I'm really, really happy with this device that I got and I'm looking forward to making more content using it. So look forward to that guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.